Chapter 5 Let's go, ladies, barked Coach Seville as Jamie and Angel rushed out of the locker room. Jamie knew they were the last ones out. She raced to the bleachers and grabbed a seat. Angel was right beside her. Even before she sat down, Jamie noticed that the gym floor was layered with thick blue mats. As you may have heard, gymnastics is a love of mine, Coach Seville began, pacing slowly in front of them. And it is a useful skill in cheerleading. So I'd like to see what each of you knows today. For some of you, this might be tough, but don't worry. You don't have to have any tumbling skills to make the squad, but they certainly will help. Tumbling skills. The words made Jamie's heart race. Since grade school, she had always been agile and fast in gym class, especially with gymnastics. Years of cheerleading had only improved her skills. Where Darcy had a natural talent for schoolwork, Jamie knew her sister couldn't touch her with athletics. Sometimes, Jamie wondered if that was why she liked sports so much. Maybe if Darcy weren't so clumsy, Jamie would never have become a cheerleader. Jamie wasn't sure. All she was certain of was that she wanted to prove to Darcy, Coach Seville, and Vanessa that she belonged on Blueford's squad. Jamie's palms began to sweat as Coach Seville explained four popular cheerleading jumps. Jamie knew all of them along with their strange names, the Toe Touch, Tuck, Hurdler, and Herky. For a few minutes, Crystal and the other varsity girls demonstrated the moves perfectly. Jamie could see by the looks on some girls' faces that the moves were new to them. Coach Seville then called up each girl by her number to show what she could do. Tasha was one of the first, and Jamie knew she had set the bar high with basic moves plus a back handspring. Very nice, Coach Seville said, nodding. Good work. Vanessa was next. The older girl did the same basic moves, but added a few nice handsprings and a back walkover. Jamie knew she was showing off, especially with the way she smiled as if she was trying to sell something. When it was her turn, Jamie nailed the main steps. Then, with Coach Seville watching, she knew she couldn't let the other two girls show her up. She finished her jumps, dashed forward, and cartwheeled across the gym floor, concentrating on keeping her arms and legs as straight as possible. When there was no more room to cartwheel, Jamie stopped, skipped a bit, then flipped head over heels, letting both feet hit the mat at the same time in a perfect round-off. Boom! The mat thundered when she landed. It was just what Jamie wanted. Whoa! Several girls cheered. Jamie made sure to look at Vanessa, who said nothing. Very, very nice, Coach Seville smiled and wrote quickly in her clipboard. Amber Lynn went next. She was one of the best tumblers on the Irving Middle School squad. Jamie knew she would do well. She finished her routine with something Jamie had seen her do before, a backflip which she turned into a handstand and actually walked toward Coach Seville's seat. Wow! the woman exclaimed when Amberlynn finally stood on her feet. Very impressive, but I think all the showing off might be going a bit far, ladies. Again, she jotted in her clipboard and then called out, Number 35! Jamie knew it was Angel's number. Boozer! Someone croaked, covering the word with a cough. Jamie turned her head to see who had said it. Behind her, there were several girls with guilty grins on their faces. But Vanessa had the widest smile of all. Coach Seville was glaring into the bleachers, too. Ladies, she said sternly, you may end up being squad mates, and squad mates owe each other respect. Do I make myself clear? When no one said anything, she said it again. Do I make myself clear? There were some murmured, yes, and the coach stared in silence at the girls in the bleachers for a long minute. Finally, she turned to Angel, who stood nervously at the edge of the mat. Go on, girl, show me what you got. Angel nodded, took a deep breath, and performed a sluggish version of the four jumps the coach had requested. When she finished, she looked confused, as if she wasn't sure what to do next. Jamie squirmed inside watching her, especially after what had happened in the locker room. Can you do a cartwheel? Coach Seville asked. Angel paused and then stretched her arms and whirled around, but her cartwheel was weak. 
She had too little speed and nearly fell over in a heap on the floor. Jamie could see she was nervous. Part of her wanted to get up and explain to Coach Seville how Vanessa and the other girls ganged up on Angel, but she didn't want to snitch. As Angel stood up, someone behind Jamie giggled. Other girls whispered. Coach Seville shot another dark look into the bleachers, and the noise stopped. Why don't you try it again, she said to Angel gently. It was as if the coach wanted her to do well. Again, Angel nodded, but when she raised her arms, Jamie noticed two dark circles of sweat in the armpits of her T-shirt, like two targets for Vanessa and her friends. Almost instantly, Jamie heard them giggling. Only this time, she could tell the girls were doing their best to keep it quiet so Coach Seville wouldn't call them out. Angel must have noticed, too, because her eyes flicked down to her shirt and she looked as if she wanted to escape to the bleachers. She rushed into another cartwheel that was almost as bad as the first one. Coach Seville scribbled in her clipboard. Thank you, Angel, she said. I, get, I guess I'm not really that good at tumbling, Coach Seville, she confessed timidly. You're not the only one, Coach Seville replied, reviewing the next name on her list. Tell them the truth, Jamie wanted to say. Tell them what those girls did. Tell them you're nervous. Instead, Angel walked back to the bleachers. She's done. Vanessa whispered with an I told you so grin, just like I said. But just before Angel sat down, she stopped and shook her head as if she was talking to herself. Then she turned around and headed back to the mats in front of the bleachers. Her face looked different somehow. Her jaw looked firm, and there was a determined look in her eyes. Did she hear Vanessa? Jamie wondered. Can I try one more time? She asked. This time, her eyes weren't focused on the floor. She looked right at Coach Seville. Sure, the coach replied. Angel paused and took a couple of short running steps and then did a perfect aerial, a kind of mid-air cartwheel where hands never touched the ground. Jamie's mouth dropped open. She had never been able to do one, but Angel stuck hers perfectly. Woohoo! cheered Crystal. That's what I'm talking about. Several other varsity cheerleaders clapped their hands. In the bleachers, most of the girls' mouths hung open in surprise. Even Coach Seville looked stunned. Can you do that again? She asked. Angel paused again as if she was focusing, and then she did another perfect aerial. Let me get this straight. You can't do a regular cartwheel, but you can do one with no hands? Angel nodded. I was nervous she explained, glancing once toward Vanessa and her friends, but saying nothing. Coach Seville laughed. Well, you certainly are full of surprises, she replied with a smile. Now go on and take a seat. Next. Another girl ran to the mats as Angel hurried back to the bleachers and sat down by herself on the last row. Jamie glanced up at Vanessa. Her arms were folded across her chest and her eyebrows were drawn tight together as if she was concentrating. When the last girl had finished, Coach Seville thanked everyone. Tomorrow will be your last day to practice all your skills before the audition, she announced. Crystal, Michelle, and Jaleesa will be available to help with the chant or the routine or your jumps, anything you think you need to work on. Nice work today, ladies. It's too bad I can't choose you all. She then clapped her hands and dismissed everyone. In the locker room, Jamie looked for Angel but didn't see her. She probably isn't in any hurry to change in front of those girls again, Amberlynn said softly, nodding toward Vanessa and Tasha. I'm not going to change either, she added as she grabbed her clothes and books from her locker. My mom has to be at work at four, so I have to watch my little brothers again. Want to come over and help? Jamie shook her head. I can't. I told Des I'd meet him at the park. Then I got to study for this mad test in Mrs. Gessner's class. That woman won't get off my back. She quickly told Amberlynn about the bad grade and the retake. Amberlynn frowned. But how are you going to do that, Jamie? The tryouts are Thursday after school at the same time. Jamie shrugged. I'll think of something, I guess, she muttered, though she still wasn't sure what. Jamie spotted Desmond sitting on a bench on the edge of the park when she arrived. He smiled and got up as soon as he saw her. Hey, Des. Jamie said as he opened his arms for a hug. 
Hey, he murmured, pulling her close to him. Jamie relaxed. They were alone and it was nice to be hugged. She could feel his heart beating beneath her ear as his arms circled tighter, pressing her closer. For a moment, Jamie forgot about Mrs. Gessner, about cheerleading, about Darcy and the new computer, about Vanessa and what she had said about her reputation. But then his hand slid lower, toward her backside. Jamie pushed away a bit. Des, she began, but he silenced her with a sudden, hungry kiss. His hand sank down her back again. Jamie twisted away from him. Cut it out, she cried. What? Des looked puzzled. What did I do? You're all over me. Jamie turned away. I just gave you a kiss. Desmond put on his smooth voice. I'm just trying to make you feel good, baby. Oh, cut it out, Jamie muttered. Des shook his head. I just don't understand you, girl, he said in his normal voice. We've been together all summer. You never stopped me kissing you before. And from what I heard, you never stopped Bobby Wallace neither. And you two were only together for like, what, a month? What, you like him more than you like me? He said, shrugging his shoulders. What? Jamie cried, stunned at what she was hearing. You think I went all the way with Bobby Wallace? Is that what you're saying? Des looked unsure, as if he realized that he had said more than he meant to. Well, no. You know, some people were talking and... What people? Jamie demanded. You tell me who's been saying that. Des wouldn't look her in the eye. Just some people. Don't matter who. The point is, the point is, what you heard ain't true. I can't believe you'd think something like that about me, Desmond. And no, I didn't like Bobby more than you. But maybe I should have. I can't believe this, Jamie yelled, walking away from him. Jamie! I don't want to talk to you right now, she fumed without turning around. Come on, Jay, I didn't mean it like that, he called. Then a second later, you still meeting me for pizza after school tomorrow? Jamie didn't answer. Was this what Vanessa meant when she said Jamie had quite the reputation? Who else thought that? Did the whole school believe the story about Jamie and Bobby? And who had started the story in the first place? The questions flooded Jamie's mind for the rest of the evening. You're awful quiet, Jamie, her father said when he came home for a quick meal between jobs. Is everything okay? Fine. Jamie tried to smile. She couldn't bring herself to tell Dad what she had learned. Just tired from cheerleading. He nodded. You making sure your grades are where they should be? He asked. I don't want to be sitting in that counselor's office again anytime soon, you hear? Don't worry, Jamie said, trying to hide the guilt she felt twisting in her gut. She made a silent promise to study right after dinner. But when the time came, Jamie's mind kept wandering. She thought about Des and Bobby Wallace, about Angel and Vanessa, and she couldn't help wondering just what Des and Vanessa really heard about her. She wanted to ask Darcy what she knew, but was pretty sure that would only make things worse. In the end, Jamie drifted off to sleep without doing any homework at all. At Blueford the next day, Jamie was relieved that Mrs. Gessner didn't say anything to her in algebra class though she was strangely cold whenever she looked in Jamie's direction. As soon as the bell rang, Jamie gathered her books and darted out the door. Des appeared by her side only seconds later. Jamie, he said, falling into step beside her. About yesterday. I don't want to talk about it, Jamie mumbled. Almost by instinct, she looked around to see if anyone was watching them. I just wanted to say I'm sorry. I was wrong, okay? He lowered his voice. I should have never believed that stuff about you and Bobby. I just thought, you know, Bobby being the kind of guy he was, that, well, you two probably had, you know, he finished awkwardly. Jamie was about to tell him off for what he had said and what he had been thinking, but then she spotted Tasha talking with a group of girls nearby. Look, I can't talk to you about this now, okay? You still going to meet me at Nico's? He flashed her his player smile. Jamie thought about it. She could see Tasha watching them out of the corner of her eye. If she and Des argued now, Tasha would know. Jamie didn't want Tasha in her business. Okay, Jamie said, but her heart wasn't in it. Something had changed. 
She was seeing Des in a whole new way. Des leaned over and planted a kiss on her cheek as if all was forgiven. See you at Nico's then, he said, turning back up the hallway toward his class. Nearby, Tasha watched, flashing a fake smile as if the incident in the locker room never happened. Hey, Jamie, Crystal said when Jamie joined the girls in the gym for the final practice before auditions. You've been looking great out there. I think you've got a good shot to make the team tomorrow. I'm about to lead a group who want to go over the step routine. She nodded toward a cluster of girls waiting on the edge of the gym. Want to join in? Jamie looked around. Amberlynn wasn't there yet, but Angel was standing with a small group, looking around as if she expected someone to pounce on her at any minute. In another corner, Jaleesa had a group of girls working on some of the jumps. Coach Seville had a smaller group at the far edge of the gym, working on some tumbling moves. Vanessa and her friends were with this group. While Jamie watched, Vanessa attempted an aerial and landed on her behind. Sure, Jamie grinned and took a spot beside Angel. Hi, Jamie. Angel's smile lit up her face. You know what, Angel? Jamie said, looking back at her. You need to do more of that. What? Smile like that, Jamie said. I'm serious. She's right, Crystal said. And be sure you do it tomorrow during your audition. Good cheerleaders always do their routines with a big smile on their face. Seriously, think about the girls here who you think are good. They're always smiling. Angel nodded thoughtfully. Okay, she said. Thanks. Just then, Amberlynn came jogging up to Crystal's group. Sorry, she panted. I had to talk to my Spanish teacher. Test next week. Jamie thought of her algebra class. A wave of dread spread over her, and she rubbed her forehead. Just then, Crystal clapped her hands to get their attention. Come on, let's go, everyone, she hollered. The small group of girls took their places, and Jamie pushed Mrs. Gessner from her mind again. It was the most fun she had in weeks. With Vanessa and her friends on the other side of the gym, Jamie was able to relax. She and Amberlynn ended up working with Angel the entire time. For once, the skinny girl actually laughed and smiled and cheered her heart out. Jamie liked her. Excellent work, ladies, Coach Seville bellowed across the gym. Jamie looked at the clock. Practice was over already. The time had gone so quickly, Jamie was surprised. Tomorrow is the big day, the coach continued. When you get here, there will be a list on the bulletin board indicating your audition group. Crystal and Jaleesa will let in one group at a time. Come in full of spirit. I want to see your jumps, your flips, all the energy you can give me. Then you'll do your chair routine and you're done. Results will be on the board Friday morning. Got it? Yes, coach, everyone shouted. Jamie glanced at Angel and smiled. All right, girls, get a good night's sleep. Good luck to you all. Thanks, you two. Angel said, looking at Jamie and Amberlynn. I have fun. She grabbed her backpack from under the bleachers and slipped it over her shoulders. You'll be here tomorrow, right? Amberlynn asked. You bet. Angel grinned, then waved at them and walked away. I gotta watch my brothers again, but if you want to come over, we could practice some more while I keep an eye on them, Amberlynn suggested. Jamie shook her head. I promised Des I'd meet him after this. Amberlynn smiled. I don't blame you. I choose Des over my brothers, too. See you tomorrow? Yeah, see you. But instead of leaving, Jamie sat back down on the locker room bench. She knew Des was waiting, but for the first time, she didn't feel like seeing him. She had always had a boyfriend, at least since the start of middle school, but now she wondered if that was a mistake. She changed out of her sweaty T-shirt and shorts as slowly as possible. The locker room emptied as the other girls grabbed their belongings and left. Jamie ignored them all, even Vanessa's mean laugh and Tasha's odd, guilty stare.